Matter is made of protons and electrons. You probably know the protons are positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged. We built computers in which we store information using the electrons. Physicists and chemists are trying to build computers based on spin or magnetism. You may not know that these particles are also magnetic. The proton has, has a weak magnetism. That magnetism can be up or down. And the electron has magnetism too. The magnetism for the electron is much bigger. And it's this magnetism we're trying to use to build the next generation of computers. Now, uh, we don't think of the magnetism of stuff every day, but it's really useful. The proton magnetism is useful for taking pictures of the brain, like in the magnetic resonance imaging machine. That's imaging the proton magnetism. Now, the amazing thing about, about MRI is that you can build a machine which is meters big and use it to see things that are less than one thousandth of a meter in size. So on this scale, every tick is a factor of 10. And you see the MRI machine up there bigger than a meter. And yet we can resolve features through the magic of the magnetic resonance phenomenon that are one one thousandth the size of the machine. Now, we'd like to image even smaller things. So here I show on this scale the size of a human hair, which is smaller than what the MRI can see. Uh, and then, you know, a factor of uh, 20 or 50 smaller is the size of a cell. 100 times smaller than that, a virus. And then another factor of 100 smaller, the size of an individual, mo individual molecule. The microscope we're building is aiming to image things at a resolution shown there, smaller than the size of an individual molecule. And the microscope that we've built detects spins using a silicon diving board, which is as long as a human hair is wide, and it's a few thousand atoms thick. At the end of it is this little magnetic tip, which is not a whole lot bigger than an individual virus. What we're measuring in our experiments is the force between this magnetic tip and the spin magnetism in the sample. Now, these forces are very small. An everyday force is one Newton. The gravitational force or the weight on one apple is roughly one Newton. A million times smaller than a Newton is a micronewton. Look at all those zeros. A million times smaller than that is one piconewton. And a piconewton is the force needed to break an individual chemical bond between atoms. Another million times smaller than that is one atonewton. And those are the forces that we're measuring in the Cornell Nano MRI experiment. How this experiment works is we take spins and we cool them down to very low temperature. And we place them in a large magnetic field, like in the MRI machine to get the spins oriented. Once the spins are oriented, we bring in our magnetic tipped silicon diving board. We lower the field a little bit and we get a little extra field from the tip. And then through the magic of the magnetic resonance phenomenon, if we irradiate the sample with microwaves or radio waves, we can flip spins below the tip. Those flip spins speed up the motion of this magnetic tip cantilever, and we can detect this speed up and use it to observe the spins. What are we using this for? Lots of things. First of all, we're using this to image spins in, 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 in quantum materials to study quantum computing. We're also using this to image the molecules of life. So smaller than a proton, but bigger than a water molecule are individual proteins. Membrane proteins are particularly interesting because they're the gatekeepers for the cell and otherwise hard to study. And they form complexes with, with other proteins uh, to make these, these beautiful molecular machines. How the proteins fit together to form the machines is a big, 
is a big jigsaw puzzle. And it's that jigsaw puzzle we're trying to, we're uh, using our microscope to solve. 